Yo, we're out here on the Voskoi Mining Farm and let's speed run some mining farm infrastructure from small stuff to big stuff. What are the best things to buy for what applications and why? This isn't an ad, not here to shill stuff. I don't give a f what you buy. I am simply here to speed run all of my gear out here. I've put years into building the Voskoi Mining Farm, procuring the most interesting equipment from literally around the world from China and Hong Kong to Poland and Russia, and of course, the USA, but also, we got a lot of Canadian gear out here. All right, so let's start with the Digital Shovel Nanopod. This is one of the newest products out here. Mini Smart Mining Farm. You look at the sizing, it's enough to basically just walk right into the door. It can come with security cameras. It has six exhaust fans on the back. And I cut in a little meter to monitor uh, the electricity in real time, but you can also do that from the software. But I like to have uh, you know, a gauge I can see at a quick glance. It has had a lot of iterations in their very long testing period. Uh, so things like handles, have been added to make servicing exhaust fans because that's a moving part. Eventually that will need to be replaced, hopefully a long time, but yeah, you know, it varies. Depending on the configuration, you can deploy 27 full-size miners in there, at least with the S21s, with the bigger S21 Pros and S21 XPs and possibly the S23s and other mining rigs, you'll get more like 20, 24. And again, there's just so much variance there. It depends on your configuration. And they may be redesigning it to fit more of the even bulkier ones in there. So I just walked around my second nanopod. This is my first one. And uh, so, and I have this one nearly filled up. The other one is not filled up or running yet. That's my next uh, focus on expanding. And I didn't, I didn't get security cameras with mine, so I just uh, drilled a quick ring camera in to add a little bit of security to that. But what's cool about those, they can be deployed on basically any electricity type, single phase, three phase, different voltages and so forth. Very, very, very versatile. And that's why it's interesting. But it comes at a premium. Depending on if they're running a sale, they give viewers a discount, all that stuff. It's like 20 plus grand to get it delivered and installed. Uh, Cause you know, you do need to do some wiring. Uh, so like I just ran, 400 amps from a 600 amp service into a disconnect and then ran that into the bus bar uh, on those and I ran parallels so I added uh, two connection points a double lug on the bus bars uh, and I know that's really fast but you know run it back if you need to learn more about it but that's a speed run on that front I think those are great options to just be like bam plug and play mining farm anywhere you want in your backyard it's your commercial building space raw land whatever drop it pull electric service if you need internet you don't have it and no one will run it to you bam starlink done okay so this is the immersion mining shed this is a more diy labor of love craft project this was originally designed to mimic a shipping container and was originally planned to be air cooled uh, but i got this other digital shovel uh, pre-made mining container in uh, which basically took my air cooled gear and I'll talk more about that one later. I don't want to drown you in digital shovel stuff. So this is immersion mine. This is liquid cooling. In the previous generation of Bitcoin and crypto mining, these were incredible solutions. They were underutilized, okay? And I'll explain more about that here in a second. So this is the fog hashing C6. I like this so much after getting one into review, I bought another one. That's the DCX BitPod two miner solution potentially four miners with what's minor. Uh, I think I have a bit of a dud, mine's broken, and I really don't like that design. However, if you want the best bang for buck in immersion, uh, potentially, and especially based on density, at least with the S19 series and form factor, nothing beats the DCX eight minor unit. It's a little more tedious to install with a dual loop system than the fog hashing units, but if it's eight miners as opposed to six miners in the fog hashing C6. That's the B6D. I don't like that unit. They phased it out. It's broken some of my miners and it's broken itself, but they did send me a replacement part. So thank you to them. That's the C2. C2 is literally just a mini version of the C6. Very cool unit. Those are the two Bixbit immersion systems, to be honest. You're gonna to need to be a master electrician and a master plumber to install those. But they're pretty cool in their own way. They're very heavy duty, and they're actually some of the most efficient and effective immersion solutions. But the installation took us like 10 days. I'm like, like 10 working days 
The C6 takes us half a day and we laugh. We laugh and we, we, we mess around at, you know, half of the half of the half day. So for me, I prefer the fog ashing C6. I really don't see the point to put a C2 in uh, because why not just do a C6? It's all of the same work and like three more grand, which I'm not saying three grand doesn't matter, but like it's all the same work and you go from two miners uh, to potentially six miners. However, the bigger miners like uh, the immersion specific uh, cannon uh, miners, which are my favorite immersion miners, especially and only for single phase. They also, you know, can be deployed in other ways, but they do work on single phase, unlike Bitmain's immersion ant miner series, which totally sucks and they're missing a huge market there. Those are awesome, but you use a lot of electricity that you may not be able to get six in there and have to run an additional circuit. But with something like the C2, that wouldn't matter because you're already running additional circuits because that doesn't come with a supplied PDU option like the C6 does. So I don't count the C2 out. If it fits your goals and your budget, go for it. Uh, if you want a bigger immersion solution, the C6, and then beyond that, they have industrial grade stuff, but I can't comment on that. I haven't used it. And to be honest, at this current time, I would not deploy a commercial level immersion system unless I had to due to like the area I was going to and noise complaints. Uh, I would definitely go air cooled. For example, like this is the M300 mini pod and here, uh, you know, S S19 generation miners and, and some of the S21s and stuff, you could essentially fit 88 miners in this box. And I ran a bunch of additional power and circuits and um, I socked a bunch of more PDUs on the wall. So I've exponentially expanded my mining capabilities in that building. So obviously I'm all about Bitcoin and I've got a fair amount of Dogecoin miners out here on the Bosscoin farm. But my next biggest bet, and I actually have more of these machines because they're much more cost effective to get into and deploy as opposed to say a Dogecoin miner, is CKB mining, Nervo's network. They're committed to their base layer chain as being a mineable coin. It's not a cryptocurrency that's going to ditch miners and move their layer one to proof of stake. If they wanna have proof of stake functions, they would add on with additional layer twos uh, like they've already done. In an era where a lot of cryptocurrencies have mistakenly abandoned proof of work, Nervos Network CKB has stuck with it. So shout out to them for supporting proof of work, supporting miners and supporting Bosscoin. And because of that, I'll be supporting them through continued mining endeavors. But beyond this, right, you can even just plug some shit in and call it a day, right? You can run a couple rigs in your garage, in your basement, maybe somewhere in your house, the West Wing. And uh, that's a great way to get started. And don't get tripped up on things like, oh, well, how do I get internet over there? They, they, I need an ethernet cable. It's like, dude, just do a mesh network, do a Wi-Fi extender and just, uh, you know, plug the ethernet cable into that or get power line adapters, which basically just run ethernet through uh, your power cables. It's pretty weird and cool technology. And then beyond that, you can look at solutions. Like you could cut an intake vent into your garage, door or wall, uh, and then an exhaust uh, fan. Uh, if you noticed, there are th uh, three fans on the immersion mining shed, and uh, those are just AC Infinities uh, off of Amazon. And they're fantastic units. They're very efficient. They have smart controllers. So those are uh, based on temperature. So, so I normally just leave one fan running all the time to keep air flowing because it's more or less needed or you know it's good. And then two other fans kick on based on temperature. So when it's warm enough, uh, you know, based on the inside temperature, which that's what matters, because that's where I really need to cool, they kick on and uh, push way more air. So uh, now I'm walking over to Vosquin HQ and in Vosquin HQ, it's my unfinished warehouse. Uh, workshop and studio. Uh, so well, that's on the agenda. But uh, in here is simulating, at least it has been for more years than I like to admit, a warehouse mining farm with literally no solutions as far as airflow goes. There is a mini split upstairs, but I never actually run it. Uh, I did one time, but that's a beside the point. The point though is you can run a fair amount of gear in a decent, you know, sized building that just like I have ridge vents, like I don't even open the windows. And so to put it into perspective, like how much gear am I really running right now? So I've got like 12 amps over there and I have about 16 amps running upstairs. So that's like 28. And then I have like another 15 amps running in here. Uh, so, you know, I essentially have 40, 45 amps 
uh, of uh, mining rigs running in this building with no airflow solution. Um, I forget the sizing offhand. The RV garage is about 20 by 40, and this is something like 28 by 36. And uh, the upstairs is a similar footprint, but not quite as big. And it, it's because it steps out with the dormer. And if you have a detached garage or a barn or something, those can be just great to throw together uh, mining solutions. Don't invest a ton of money that you don't have to when you could be buying hardware, right? Uh, I'd say I can't give you financial advice, but the president of the USA has his own shit coin. So I'm pretty sure that everyone can do whatever they want to do now. What a weird ass time to live in. I think Donnie's been watching my videos as he's been getting up to speed on Bitcoin and crypto. Donnie, what up? Legal migrant. I love this guy. <laughs> and now enter the Foscoin Green mining shed. Uh, so I've capitulated on hard drive mining. Uh, hard drive mining the first time and the second time proved to be not fruitful endeavors. I don't think I'll ever mine with hard drives again, unless it's my project and I launch my own cryptocurrency. And I'm like dead ass serious. Uh, hard drive mining sucks and it's because there's just never been good project support on it. And it, it is heavily dominated by Chinese operations. That's like the dark side of all that stuff. Kind of like FPGA mining. On paper, you see some stuff online, you think it could be cool, but that FPGA mining is terrible investment. GPU mining was incredibly cool, but now with all the data centers and NVIDIA's dominance and the AI boom, GPU mining could never be what GPU mining was many years ago. It's impossible. The entire landscape hasn't just shifted. It's radically changed to the point that it would be absolutely unrecognizable. So just give up on that dream. The only thing, to some degree, but server farms have always been the problem on that front, is CPU mining, which is a bit ironic. One CPU, one vote, really bring it back to the uh, beginning. But open source Bitcoin mining hardware and software like BitAxis are really the next best thing to like one CPU, one vote. Uh, so small scale, uh, Bitcoin and potentially other crypto mining. Uh, easy to deploy, essentially a plug and play setup and uh, mining over Wi Fi, easing those barrier to entries, smaller rigs, essentially no impact on your electricity. It's like charging a phone. They're affordable, you know, 100 bucks to several hundred bucks to, depending on the model and stuff, to get some hash rate that has a small but actual capability. To hit a block, like for example, if you have a mini Bitcoin miner like a BitAx Gamma or you know the Turbo or the Nerd QX Plus Plus or whatever, and you hit a Bitcoin block, like congrats, $350,000, dude, off a $150 machine potentially. Crazy. Uh, but the green mining shed now serves, as it always has, as a mini field office, and it's a great environment for me to test rigs in air-conditioned environments. This is my redneck data center. I don't know if you can still say that word, but I'm a white dude in the country, so I guess if anybody gets to say it, it's me. But on the other hand, I'm a third generation, hailing from the mother country, Slovakia. Thanks, Gramps. But anyway, in here, it's basically turned into the Bidax shed. And uh, you know, this, is, this is a cool environment for me as someone who reviews a lot of stuff to test things. However, it's inefficient and it just makes no sense to uh, build a mining shed and then air condition it. Like, yeah, like the stuff is pristine in there, but when you actually look at what it takes to cool the amount of heat you're producing with even just a couple full-size mining rigs, it never adds up. Uh, for example, you could just take a mining shed, cut a couple holes in one side, put a couple fans on the other side, you'd be in well under what it costs to get an AC unit, it would provide better cooling capabilities. And you also wouldn't just absolutely melt the dang thing because it's not really designed for that. You would need like literally true data center cooling capabilities. And let me just tell you right now, that is not the right move. Not for this. You need to keep your gear as clean as it needs to be. And mining rigs don't need to be that clean. They can be kind of dirty. Shit, back in the day, in my original mining shed, I shouldn't say this, but man, I ran that thing filter off for a long time, a lot longer than I should have. I never misled anyone, but when I sold a lot of my gear in a transition period, some of the guys called it Voscoin dust. 
and then made jokes like it was special because like my stuff was filthy and then i had some dirt next to it and that fell down and that freaking kaboom splashed all over the gear oh man it was not good you ever had a facial nah <laughs> not me but that's probably what it was like but with dirt dude chill out i'm talking about a spa or something make it weird so number one solution if you're handy and you want a project and you want to keep the cost down just get some kind of cheap small shed i mean like anything like there's some guys on here that have built smaller stuff but i mean you know you can do stuff like get like a four by six and you know smaller buildings things like that but to be honest i love actually having more space and you could throw up a wall uh, there's a lot of different things you could do. For me, if I was going to build a mining shed again, I would build something like a 12 by 24. And that's way oversized, but it gives me an area to put some spare parts, uh, to do some organization. I can have the key piece, it's air cooled. And then I could also just, um, you know, do some immersion cooling because most of these have sealed tops or close enough to sealed. Where where I wouldn't worry about pushing a bunch of air over it, especially after you throw a filter or two up. And that would give me a fun area to have fun, tinker, and, and if you're gonna mine, you should have some passion. That's what keeps me in the game. Like, I love this shit. And that's why I'm still doing it nearly a decade later. It's not just a get rich quick scheme that I expect to just, you know, work hard one weekend and, you know, do nothing for a year. And then I just made a bunch of money over my investment. Like. I enjoy this and I'm into it and that sets me up for success. And if you don't have that level of interest, let's be honest, like you should find something else to do. Uh, so, hey, that's my two cents. You know, that's the easy, you know, most cost effective way. If you want something versatile and, and really easy, like plug and play easy, the Nanopod is, very, is a very cool uh, solution. And then, you know, beyond that, an immersion mining shed is a very interesting endeavor, but the current generation of mining rigs are not immersing well at all. So unless you're down to get immersion specific models that will work on your electricity, which assuming it's single phase pretty much only limits you to the Canon immersion miners, uh, you don't have a ton of capabilities or options. Um, some of these other rigs, you know, they, they can immerse, they do all right. Uh, but, but I'm telling you that, that there's been so many failures of recent uh, rigs that it has just turned me off because this goes from fun to fun really fast when your rigs start breaking and you're trying to warranty them and then you know maybe they'll throw it out and charge you a bill because you immersed it and that voids the warranty. Uh, so the, the risk versus reward is not there. Also, if you get cold feet, it's a lot more difficult to clean up an immersed rig and sell it as opposed to just pulling an air-cooled rig off the shelf. And if you ran it in a filtered environment, you could probably just throw it in the box uh, and be done with that. Uh, so, and you know, of course, nothing beats running a couple rigs in your house and just, you know, having fun getting started. And if you have, uh, if you have an existing building or something, you know, why not make use of that and go from there? You could always take that warehouse type design and then build a box inside of it. And then you have a, you know, a semi-sealed environment and you just have to just circulate air and you essentially just build a mining shed, a little mini mining shed inside of that building. And it's quick, dirty and easy because you don't have to worry about, you know, the whole structure. You don't have to worry about making it watertight because it's already in a watertight environment. So, uh, you know, just, just, you know, speed running some of this stuff, some food for thought. And, uh, and I'm excited. I, I think that, you know, I, I maintain a good outlook. I think there's a great future. I'm in this for the long haul, always have been, but I'm entrenched deeper than ever. And uh, if you feel similar, this may be a great route for you to take, or maybe you're thinking about the next step or where to go from here. I hope that, uh, you know, you find some value in this content. I always just think of my farm as an open source mining farm, uh, just like how Bitcoin's open source. So just out here doing my thing, trying to have some fun and share what's worked well and what hasn't. I'm Bosker on the Bosco YouTube channel. This is Tails, our CDO, our Chief Design Officer. For 10 seconds of Tails in every video, because that super cute folk owns Voscoin and kickstarted this journey. I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.